Hello and welcome to my video, Top 10 Cursed Objects. Number 10, Black Orlov. While it is a breathtaking piece of jewelry, it carries with it a dark past, one darker than the gem itself. Originally this gem was stolen from a Hindu temple by a traveling monk. The gem at the time was part of a statue of a Brahma bull and it was one of the eyes. Just so it said, the statue was for the Hindu god of creation and sometimes the stone is referred to as the Eye of the Brahma Diamond. In 1932, it was purchased by a man of the name J.W. Paris. Weeks later, Mr. Paris sold the gem and climbed a skyscraper in New York and jumped to his death. A princess by the name of Nadia Orlov came into possession of the gem and later climbed to the top of a building in Rome and leapt. The Orlov Diamond then was owned by a princess Leonilla who you guessed it, jumped off a building to her death. In 1950, a man by the name of Charles F. Wilson bought the diamond and decided to break the curse by having it split into two. Reportedly, the process was successful, and today some of Hollywood's finest ladies have been seen wearing it on the red carpet. Number 9, Ayers Rock. This is a beautiful and mysterious part of the Australian landscape, but it apparently holds a bit of a curse. This landform is looked at as a spiritual landmark for many of the aboriginal tribes located near the site. It is recommended that tourists not take a memento of their visit home with them. Throughout the years, the Park Service has received about one package a day from those who didn't heed the warning, and they returned their stolen rocks. Many of the packages included notes expressing the fact that soon after taking the rock, Bad luck, illness, divorce, and even death has befallen the victims. Many local people claim nothing has happened to them, but maybe it is a foreign issue. Number 8. Cursed Pillar This unassuming pillar, located in Augusta, Georgia, carries with it a very foreboding warning. Originally it was part of a building that housed the market. An evangelist wanted to preach the word by it and was ejected from the site. In a fit of rage, he stated that the market would be destroyed and the only thing left standing would be the pillar. It was also stated that anyone who dared try to move the pillar would be struck dead. As fate would have it, a freak tornado came through and tore apart the market but left the pillar. Reportedly, in the late 1960s, a construction crew tried to move the pillar and some were struck by lightning while others were crushed by their own machinery. To this day, the pillar stands in the same location and a story has spread so far as to say, if you even touch it, illness or death will befall you. Number 7. Thomas Busby's Chair This chair was a favorite chair of one Thomas Busby, who in 1702 was convicted of murdering his father-in-law. Coincidentally, he killed this man due to him sitting in Thomas's chair after an argument. The day he was to be hung, he stopped asked to stop by the bar where his chair resided to have a meal. The moment he was done, he stood up and said, anyone who sits in this chair would die shortly. During World War II, the chair became a hot seat, and people soon noticed that anyone who sat in it would not come back from the war. In fact, two airmen who sat in it died in a car crash driving back to the base. Two bricklayers tried to curse out, and the one who actually sat in it fell to his death later that day. After many more deaths, the pub owner moved it to the basement to avoid further tragedy. Sadly, a delivery man sat in it to take a break and died in a truck crash later. To date, the chair has killed everybody who has sat in it. This chair was finally hung up in the Thirsk Museum, preventing anyone from sitting in it again. Number 6. The Hands Resist Him this piece of art originally started out as a photo of the artist at the age of five. Later, Bill Stoneham created this painting and it has been talked about ever since. At one point, a famous actor in the Godfather movie purchased the painting and after his death, it mysteriously was found hidden behind a brewery by a couple. The couple later reported that the figures in the painting would move and sometimes leave altogether, only to be seen in their bedroom. The couple put it up for sale and specifically stated that they would be absolved from any responsibility once it was sold. 
It is said that the first person who put it up for display and the art critic of it both died mysteriously afterward. If that story isn't strange enough, notice something about it that I hadn't noticed until doing research. There are hands in the windows behind the boy. Number 5. Valentino's Ring The famous movie actor named Rudolph Valentino purchased this ring even though the shop owner mentioned that it carried a curse. He wore the ring in his movie, The Young Raha, and it failed miserably. He wore the ring again in The Son of the Sheik and died afterwards of acute peritonitis. The ring then passed to a friend who immediately fell ill and her, cracking, her acting career tanked. She passed the ring to a young singer who was later found dead in a shootout. The singer's friend, Joe Casino, was next to acquire the ring and resisted wearing it. Finally he gave in and put it on and was killed in a car crash a week later. Casino's brother was skeptical of the curse, but put it in a safe hidden away. A thief broke in and took the ring and was gunned down by police. At one point, a director asked to borrow the ring for a movie he was doing on Valentino's life. Casino allowed it, and the actor playing Valentino wore it for a screen test and died suddenly of a rare blood disorder. To this day, the ring still resides in a safe deposit bank at the Los Angeles Bank. Number 4. The Anguished Man this painting belongs to a Sean Robinson who states that originally it was owned by his grandmother who kept it in the basement hidden away. She stated that the painting was haunted and in fact the artist who painted it used his own blood as a medium in the paint and committed suicide not long after completing it. At one point his grandmother had it hung up but constantly kept hearing crying and seeing the shadow of a man in her house until she took it down. Once Sean grew up he brought the painting into his house and started hearing the crying and screaming from nowhere. He states that doors would open by themselves and the same shadow man appeared. And also his family started having horrific shared nightmares. He actually has a video here on YouTube of an investigation he did on the painting. To this day, Sean still has the painting but refuses to sell it. I say he can keep it. I've had enough issues with spirits. Number three, the Bassano vase. In 1988, a pure silver vase was unearthed that appeared to be created in the 15th century. Inside the vase was a paper that read, Beware, this vase brings death. It was auctioned off to a pharmacist for just over $2,000. Three months after purchasing it, he died of mysterious causes, and the family sold the vase to a surgeon. Two months later, this 37-year-old man was dead of unknown causes. The vase transferred hands to another man, and yet again, died three months later. The last owner died only a month after receiving this vessel of death. His family threw the vase out of a window, and the police tried to return it to them with a ticket for disorderly conduct. The family refused to take it back, and the police tried to give it to multiple museums, who all refused it as well. Reportedly, the police finally buried it and refused to give its location. Honestly, if I found something that specifically said it brings death, I would leave it where it was. Number two, the Dybbuk box. This item was the object that gave the movie the possession, its source material. The box is simply a Jewish wine box, but it is supposed to be possessed by a malicious spirit, also known as a Dybbuk. These spirits are reportedly beings that can't move on due to their acts as being alive, or if they have unfinished business. They are known to be able to haunt people or even possess someone totally. The box was originally purchased by a Holocaust survivor and at a later date was purchased by a man in an estate sale. Upon lear learning the box was a family heirloom, he tried to return it to the family who stated, we don't want it. While owning the box, the man opened it and had terrible nightmares. He gave it to his grandmother, nice guy, and she suffered a stroke the same day. The box passed hands two more times with each owner having terrible nightmares and mysterious physical ailments. The last owner took it to a rabbi's in order to seal the Dybbuk in the box. They supposedly were successful and the current owner has it hidden away and refuses to divulge its location. Number 1. Annabelle the Doll 
I made this number one since I hate dolls already, but this one proves why so many others share my same feeling. This doll was purchased in 1970 for a woman on her 28th birthday. Her name was Donna. Once the doll was at her apartment, she noticed it would suspiciously move on its own and leave notes on parchment for her, which, coincidentally, she didn't own parchment paper. At one point, a medium told Donna it was possessed by a seven-year-old girl named Annabelle Higgins. Later, Donna reached out to famous demonologist Ed and Lorraine Warren after the doll tried to strangle her friend who was visiting. The Warrens informed Donna that the doll was possessed not by a seven-year-old girl, but by a demon, and performed an exorcism and took the doll. Their ritual apparently was unsuccessful, and on the way home, the brakes failed in the car. The Warrens constructed a special box to contain the doll after it escaped from its previous enclosure, which had multiple locks on it. Reportedly, if visitors mocked or taunt Annabelle while at the Warrens Museum, they will have fatal or near-fatal accidents on the way home. This doll has been the inspiration for the movie Annabelle, as well as The Conjuring. With that, I will end this video. Uh, be safe. I'll see you in the next one. Later.